Hi, I'm Tracy Levesque. Um, this is uh, my studio here at Western Avenue Studios. I've been here for about 11 years. I'm an acrylic painter. I paint all kinds of everything from nature to monsters, animals, all kinds of fun things. Um, I call it fairy tale realism and I paint both the beautiful and the bizarre. So something for everyone, very universal. I call the, the style that I do fairy tale realism because for years and years, I go to shows and people are like, oh, what is this? Impressionism, expressionism, uh, what do you call this? Who taught you this? What is this? Who's your mentor? Who are your influence? I was just like, it's, it's realism, but it's like realism that transports you, realism that lifts you up, realism that takes you to a different place in a lot of ways. It's like the world we see, but a more dramatic version, a more stylized version. So that, again, that universal quality. So I call it fairy tale realism because it's not like, you know, fairies and goblins and like, you know, Grimm's fairy tales kind of stuff. It's fairy tale because it's a heightened sense of reality. In fairy tales, the big thing is the characters are on an adventure. They're, they're deeply embedded in the moment, in the present. And when you look at the work, you try to figure out what you're looking at. You know, am I looking at a tree trunk? Am I looking at rocks? Am I looking at a moon? And then, oh wow, look at all this texture. Oh, look at this tree bar. It, it makes people be very present with the work, which I think is really important as a viewer. You know, when you're looking at art, you shouldn't be thinking, you should be drawn in and um, trying to figure out what you're seeing, you know, and telling yourself your own story. I mean, the artist part is, you know, the process of creating, but once the painting's done, the journey is for the viewer. So. The, uh, the fairy tale part is kind of that journey of the viewer. You know, you go on this journey when you look at the painting because you see it from a distance. It might look somewhat realistic, like a saturated photograph, but then you, you move in closer and you see all the little lines, all the little colors, all the little textures. And there's an element of abstraction in that, which again, takes people to another place. I mean, I've had people say, oh, it's psychedelic art, you know, this, that, and the other thing. It's very 3D, it's optical illusion. I mean, people can call it what they want. I just call it that because more times than not, when I say, oh, it's fairy tale realism, it just clicks. People are like, oh, of course, I get it. I totally get it now. Um, with my, my monster series, I started it a couple years ago, and it was just kind of a joke, something to kind of um, take a break from painting landscapes. And it turned into this um, kind of a big thing because people responded so well to it. They thought it was really fun. They were like, this is great, you know, because I did Lowell, and there's a lot of like, you know, historical landmarks in Lowell, like the Worthen or the library, um, the old Sun building, and, um, you know, pairing the monsters with, you know, the different uh, landmarks was a lot of fun because, for instance, like, I couldn't do anything evil to the uh, the library, so it had to be big fluffy bookworms, you know, because books are great. <laughs> but, um, like I said, with the Hafner's Dinosaur, you know, obviously it's a gas station with fossil fuels, you know, it's a subtle idea, but it's still there, you know, the dinosaurs, that's what makes the fossil fuels, so, you know, that thus the, uh, the gas station. Um, and like with the old Sun building, it's funny because there, when a lot of people used to work at the Sun, they they saw the gorilla attacking the uh, the Sun building. They thought it was a riot because he's literally taking the newspaper name apart piece by piece. So it's they thought that was a riot, and then the whole city's on fire well, with the uh, with the Sun building. Um, and then uh, with the the gremlins attacking Spaghettiville, that one's a lot of fun because um, obviously it was a huge uh, a huge deal in Lowell, the Spaghettiville, the Prince Spaghetti Factory years ago, and a lot of people don't even know about it. They just see the the Spaghettiville sign and they're like, oh yeah, what, what was that all about? It used to be a big restaurant there, and you know, like Lowell being a mill town, people worked in the Prince Factory. And um, obviously the gremlins can't eat after midnight or bad things happen. So Spaghettiville was the perfect place for that. Um, and then like with the, uh, the Owl Diner one, um, I used Hitchcock's The Birds, um, you know, to attack that. Because that scene in The Birds uh, where she's walking past, like, I think it's a playground and all the birds are in the trees is kind of creepy. Cause, but if you ever drive down that street sometimes uh, outside the, uh, the Owl Diner, you see birds on the wires all the time. And I was like, oh, that would be perfect. So. So the monster series was just about creating um, a story, you know, taking a landmark that everybody knows and um, pairing it with a monster that is kind of perfect for the attack. So it's funny. It's not violent or vengeful or evil or anything. It's just supposed to make people laugh and think, oh, wow, that's fun, you know. So it was, it was a really fun series because, I, again, I love illustration. So it was a, a chance for me to get more into storytelling and creating more um, conceptual work, which I don't normally do. 
It's interesting. I was thinking about, uh, about like, you know, why do we do what we do? And um, I come from working class parents. My dad is, uh, he's French Canadian. He moved down to the United States with his family because his dad was a lumberjack. So they moved down through Maine and New Hampshire building the roads and they ended up in Massachusetts. And then my, my grandmother, my grandma, she uh, worked at a paper factory. So obviously they were killing trees for a long time. So it's kind of interesting that I choose trees as my main subject matter. Um, but on that note, I think, you know, that working class background, like my mom worked at a grocery store her whole life. My dad uh, was a machinist. And, uh, you know, we did, as kids, we didn't have a lot of stuff. You know, like we used to get paper from my grandma at the, uh, the paper mill and my mom would bring home like the price change paper from the grocery store and we would draw on the back side where the numbers weren't. So we just drew on anything and you know, we'd color and like, you could create any world you wanted. You didn't need money, you could just make it. So that kind of thing for my sisters and I uh, created this whole imaginative world that we lived in. And um, for me, I, I, it kind of always kept art in my life, no matter what else I pursued when I went to college later for different things. The, um, that ability to create a world out of nothing was you know, a lifesaver for me and a lifesaver, I think, for a lot of people when, you know, you grow up, you know, working class and you don't have a lot of money, you can't go on vacations everywhere, so you have to dream it up. And um, sometimes that's better than reality. You know, you appreciate reality even more when you get a taste of it later on because you were able to create your own for so long. But that's why I try to have prints and uh, magnets and stickers and, you know, I think people should have original art. I, I think anyone can afford it. Um, I do installment payment plans for people because I understand maybe you can't afford it and you want to just do $10 a month or $100 a month. Um, but I think everyone should have access to original art. I mean, we live in amazing times with technology and amazing times with just how much access people have to everything, you know, energy, technology, all of that. And uh, the idea that people still can't afford original art is just insane to me. So that's, again, part of my, my whole concept as an artist is having affordable art for everyone. I came to Lowell because of Western Avenue Studios. I had a good friend who was an artist here, and he said, oh, yeah, you should get a studio there. It's really close to Boston and all the shows, uh, but it's, you know, more affordable. And then as soon as I moved here, I was like, wow, this is a really cool place. You know, the canals, um, all the landmarks, which I later had monsters attack. Um, but the whole artistic um, history of Lowell, the idea of, you know, with the mill girls here and, you know, the whole, um, you know, the, all of that, like the women's fight for equality in the mills fascinates me. And there's just so much history here. And um, obviously being on the Merrimack, I mean, you know, Thoreau went through here. He mentions it in his books. Um, Kerouac. Uh, some of my influences as a painter are um, Norman Rockwell, which is hard to believe if people look at my work, but um, I grew up in Berkshire County in Western Mass and his work was a huge influence on me. Uh, his line work, his technical drawing skills, which I think are the foundation of any good artist. Um, I'm influenced a lot by German Expressionism, um, Japanese printmaking, uh, that whole period is just beautiful, beautiful artwork, which was just used in everyday reproductions of magazines and newspapers, but phenomenal skill. Um, so I think one of the, probably the biggest influences on me has been illustration, a lot of the, the golden age illustrators. And um, as a kid, coloring books, I mean, that's where you learn color theory. <laughs> so some of the influences, I mean, the biggest influence in my life as a painter has been nature. I spent a lot of time outdoors, you know, soaking in a lot of the color. Um, I think paintings should um, capture emotion more than they capture reality because anyone can just take a photo and you see reality. But um, I think when you look at nature, all your senses are activated. So the bright colors and the, uh, the movement of nature is, is a huge part of my work. Um, and it has like a three dimensional quality too, like nature, um, again, activating all the senses. Uh, the subject matter I like to do most is landscape. Um, I do a lot of like night skies, try to use iridescent colors, metallic colors, trying to capture the feel of the night sky. So uh, a lot of kind of universe stuff. Um, but I love doing trees. Um, some people, when they walk into my booth at shows, they're like, what is with the trees? And I'm like, they're everywhere. They're like, you know, Mother Nature never could be personified in any other way, I think, because trees give us life. They give us everything. Um, but they're so interesting, too. They're like people. Each tree has interesting bark, uh, different features in the different seasons. Um, they're kind of like the wise ones that stand there through all of time and just kind of keep an eye on us and remind us that, you know, silence is good sometimes and you just watch and you observe and be present. 
Um, but I like painting uh, monsters too. Monsters are fun because they're universal. They appeal to everyone. And uh, there's no boundaries with monsters because they don't exist. So you can do anything with them and everybody's like, that's cool. Whereas if you did a person or something else in there, like a, an animal, people start to have ideas and conceptualizations and, you know, thinking too much. But when you have a monster, everybody just laughs and says, that's fun. Just seeing all age groups and all, all people, no matter where they came from, responding to monsters was delightful. <laughs> everybody loves monsters. It doesn't matter who you are. So it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a way to communicate with people about interesting subjects. Like um, with the Lowell series I did with the monsters attacking Lowell, one of my favorite ones is the big old dinosaur attacking Hafners because it's like revenge of the fossil fuels, you know? And um, so, uh, you know, have fun with uh, a lot of the political things happening in the world and some of the environmental issues you can do with monsters. Um, but I paint pretty much uh, anything, really. I've done portraits before. I've done commission work for... Uh, different companies, um, different clients, you know, over the years I've done all kinds of things. But I just think uh, with, with painting, you know, expressing an idea is, um, is very powerful when you use your own voice in a way that um, makes people laugh or makes people smile. It's, I think it's very simple, you know, color and line, it just creates emotion in people. I think uh, being playful with your work is important because you shouldn't take anything in life too seriously. Um, and as an artist, that's something you learn no matter what medium you're in, is if you, if you take yourself too seriously and have too many expectations, you're going to be disappointed in the same thing in life. Um, so I think having a playfulness in your work and something that allows everyone to access it is in, it's so important to me in my work. Um, the whimsy part of it, I, I don't think I plan it. I think it just uh, it just gets in there because I do have a bit of a wicked sense of humor and I just like I like to see people's reactions to the the work so even with my landscape work sometimes people will look at the the paintings and they're they're all these bright colors and lines and um, I was at a show this weekend and a lady walked into the booth and she said I feel like I'm going to be sucked in like Alice in Wonderland and I was like well you never know you might uh, uh, so they're like portals into another world that kind of pulls people out of their heads pulls people out of their thoughts which is like a you know like the Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland. I think that's a, something we all need, especially now in the world as it is. You know, you want to go someplace lighter, someplace, again, not so conceptual. For an artist to get started in the first place, I think they need some kind of a vision, a starting point in their own mind where they're, where they're going. Like, if, from a painting perspective, I think... Um, as an artist, you need to have an idea of what you're trying to say with your work. Um, and it doesn't even have to be too complicated, just you need to have a unified style, uh, a style that's recognizable as yours. Um, you can feed off of a thousand different influences, but you have to be yourself. You have to have found that voice, which um, people can see as like, oh, that's that's your work. It's, it's special because it's unique to you. Yes, I think artists should help each other. Um, everybody was a struggling artist once, at some point. Everyone has questions. Everyone needs a starting point. Um, my advice for artists who are maybe insecure starting, you know, pursuing their art uh, career would be just start. Just begin. Just start somewhere. Like, you know, start drawing, post it on social media, just get it out there, see what happens. You have that give and take with people looking at your work. And um, then start going to open studio events, start talking to people, um, you know, follow your favorite artists, get inspiration from them. There's so much out there that's available to people for free just on social media. They could learn so much from people that they admire, people that they like, um, but you just have to start.